Hey, what is going on guys? In this video today, we're going to be going over a few reasons why you aren't getting better at Fortnite. No matter how casually you play Fortnite, everybody wants to get better to the game, at least to some degree. Maybe you don't want to be a pro, but even just getting one to two extra kills a game would make playing Fortnite so much more enjoyable for a lot of people. Because of that, it can be really frustrating if you're constantly playing, but you feel like your skill level isn't really changing. It's definitely a common issue that a lot of people have, and the purpose of this video is to try to help you escape from that zone of no improvement. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so one of the main reasons why people don't improve is because they don't understand the mistakes that they're commonly making. One of the easiest ways to get better at anything in life is to stop repeating mistakes that you make over and over again. That should be fairly obvious. You know, in basketball, if you spread your feet too far apart while shooting, you can't generate enough power and it messes up your entire shot. So if you keep making that mistake over and over again, it's going to make it impossible to improve. However, probably the hardest part of fixing most mistakes is recognizing that you're doing something wrong. Now, if you're on a basketball team with a coach, that probably isn't too much of a problem because he'll just tell you what you're doing wrong. But when you're playing Fortnite, you're on your own for the most part. Because of that, here's a really helpful tip that I actually heard a few years back when Fortnite was only like three to four months old and I was trying to get better. For the next two to three days or whatever time frame you feel comfortable with, each time you die in Fortnite, use the notes app on your phone or computer and write down why you die. It honestly shouldn't take you more than like 15 to 20 seconds, and it's also a constructive way to pass a little bit of time between loading out of one game and into the next one. That little exercise right there is so good for two reasons. First off, it makes you at least put some thought into what happened that caused you to die. You don't have to go super crazy and write an entire paragraph explaining every little thing that happened in extreme detail, but even a simple sentence like, I died because I played too over aggressive and I got caught by a full team in a bad spot, that right there will make you much less likely to make that mistake again in the next game or two at least. Also, as you start to get a larger sample size and write down the reasoning for more and more deaths, you'll start to see which mistakes you're making most commonly and that's obviously really important. However, the only way that this exercise is going to work, and also the only way you're going to improve in the long run, is if you're willing to take personal responsibility for your deaths. Blaming factors outside of your control for everything is, at least in my opinion, one of the biggest reasons why a lot of people struggle to improve. I get the fact that there are a lot of frustrating or BS ways to die in Fortnite, and honestly, some of them may truly be fully out of your control. If you're fighting someone at point-blank range while jumping and you get heavy snipe from 200 meters away, how much can you really blame yourself for that? So if every once in a while you chalk up a death to things out of your control, that's totally fine, but a lot of people have this bad habit of truly convincing themselves that almost every Every death they have isn't their fault. Let me give you a textbook example of this in the form of a really popular short clip from a few months ago that some of you will probably recognize right away. Bro, I what? what? Hunter, scope. Scope. Dude, controller, man. Like, please, please just get nerfed. Please, I do. I will do anything. Like. It's not fair, that's not fair, no keyboard and mouse player hits. So that right there was obviously solo World Cup winner Booga, and after dying to scoped in a random game, he then immediately, without even thinking, blamed controller aim assist for his death. In that situation, he convinced himself right away that he didn't die because of anything he did, he only died because of a mechanic in the game that's totally out of his control and also super overpowered. 
However, if you really focus while watching that clip, you'll realize that he would have died to pretty much anybody in that situation. He only had 51 total health, so he was too shottable by almost any AR in the game, and he launch padded in pretty much a straight line directly at Scoped. If you actually watch it from Scope's perspective, it was a super easy kill that he would have been embarrassed if he didn't get. Now I don't want to single out Booger or anything, and to be fair, some aim assist deaths can be pretty crazy, but that clip showed that even pros can fall into some of the mental traps that prevent players from improving. Booga could have easily realized that he made a not so smart rotation and worked to correct it in the future, but because he didn't, he gains nothing positive from that death. There's nothing wrong with admitting that you made a bad play, or even that the player who killed you is simply better than you. That type of acceptance will help you a lot in the long run. So once you've identified your mistakes, which I believe is the hardest part, this is when you need to start focusing on improving the areas of the game that you struggle with the most. With some mistakes, that's going to be relatively easy, with others not so much. Something easy to fix would be the example that I used earlier. You play too aggressive and frequently end up in bad situations because of that. Alright, well, if you can recognize that, all you need to do is tone down your aggressiveness a bit and take a few seconds to analyze fights before you push them. However, an example of something that would require more work is if you look at your list of deaths and you frequently see something like, died in a box fight because my opponent pushed me. That most likely means that you're dying because of your mechanics instead of mentality, so if you struggle with box fights, the obvious answer is to either grind box fights with your friends, or if you don't have anybody to play with, just use the new creative mode box fight matchmaking. Now when it comes to actually playing Fortnite, I want to point out another common issue that I believe prevents a lot of people from improving, playing the game without being totally engaged. I'm sure all of you guys can relate to a class in school where you want to do well so you try really hard to focus. And for maybe the first 5 to 10 minutes, everything's going well, but then eventually as time goes on, your mind starts to wander and you start to retain less and less of what you're being taught. Now I'm guessing everybody watching this video enjoys playing Fortnite more than sitting in a math or history class, however, the same principle applies. When I play Fortnite for anything more than maybe two hours straight, I start to become less and less engaged with the game, and I enter a mental state of playing that I call autopilot. That doesn't mean I'm totally clueless when playing, and I'll still have good games from time to time, but when this happens, I'm basically just going through the motions while playing. And obviously, the less engaged I am, the less likely I am to play well, and also the less likely I am to understand my mistakes and improve as a player. I'm sure plenty of you guys out there can relate to that as well. So I want to share one suggestion of how to stay fully focused at all times that's really helped me, and that's playing the game in shorter bursts instead of one long session. Now this may not be possible all the time, I know that, but let's say on a given day you look at your daily schedule or whatever, and you decide that you have two free hours to play Fortnite throughout the day. If you're someone that starts to lose focus and generally just enjoy the game less after about an hour, you should try really hard to play two one hour long sessions instead of one two hour long session. That's something I've started to do more and more recently, and it's really helped me stay focused, and I've just been having more fun playing the game because of it. Another reason why you may not be improving as a player is because you aren't increasing your level of competition over time. Public matches, especially with skill-based matchmaking, are a decent way to get better, but it's definitely nowhere near the highest level of competition that you can play against. Much like with anything else in life, one of the best ways to get better at something is by going up against people that are better than you. That's why even if you think you're just an average player, at least try to play something more competitive like arena mode or a weekly cash cup. 
As you get higher and higher in the divisions, you'll probably reach a point where you're one of the worst players in the entire lobby. However, nothing exposes your weaknesses as a player more than getting absolutely destroyed a couple of times by players that are better than you. And also, as you continue to play against players that are better than you, you'll start to pick up little things that they do to you that you can then turn around and use on other players. It's just a really worthwhile learning experience as a whole that I just can't recommend enough if you're trying to get better at the game. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you watched the entire thing, be sure to let me know with a comment down in the comment section below. Let me know if you're someone who feels that you struggle to improve at times, and if so, what do you try to do to stop that from happening? Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, do whatever the heck you want, and I will catch you guys next time.